us, we believe that everything has a designer. Everything has a designer. And everything has a creator. Right? Everything has a creator. Not only that, but you can talk about, you can use, the interesting thing about the phone is you can present both the cosmological argument and the teleological argument. Both. The cosmological argument is in relation to the first cause. Meaning, you know, things don't just pop up into existence, right? They have to have a first cause. Right? So think about like, you guys know what dominoes are, right? The domino effect. You hit that first domino, what happens? You have a domino chain. There has to be a first cause. There has to be a first cause. And, and thus, with the phone, if this phone, if I told the person, hey, if you ask the person, hey, if I told you that, this thing keeps going on, right? Emergency alerts. Um, if I tell a person, hey, if I found this phone in the middle of a desert, and I told you that it doesn't have a creator, a designer, would you believe me? You know, it just popped into existence with all its complexity and design, etc. Of course they would say no. So this is called the first cause argument, and it also, it's interesting because it deals with the intellectual design as well as first cause. You see what I mean? These are two separate things, brothers and sisters. First cause, meaning how did it come to existence? You know, is, did something create it? And if something created it, was it created with design and complexity or not? So those are two different things, but both, of, both arguments can be used. So just to kind of make it simple, the uh, cosmological argument is to say that everything has a first cause. So we can put forward a deductive argument. And I'll give you one deductive argument that's very easy. It's three steps. So you say, anything or everything that came to exist has a cause. Did you guys get that line? Everything that came to exist has a cause. The universe came to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. We can apply that to the phone too. Okay, so we'll say, everything that comes to exist or everything that came to exist has a cause. The phone came to exist, therefore, therefore the phone has a cause. So what is the cause of the phone? Communication. This specific phone. Design. Design. Who's the designer of the iPhone? Apple. Apple, right? Apple engineers. So the Apple engineers were the first causers of the iPhone. Okay. So. In terms of the iPhone, you can present it if you want to use the worldly dimension. But if you want to use the universe, something greater, we say everything that comes to exist has a cause, or everything that came to exist, because it already came to exist, has a cause. The universe came to exist, meaning it came into existence. Therefore, the universe has a cause. All right? So everyone understand that point? That's called the cosmological argument. Okay. The teleological argument is to say, well, this phone is so complex, it's full of design, it's, it's just too complex for there to not be a creator. It's too complex, and that can be applied to the universe too. The universe is too complex, right? There are too many, there's just way too many details, and I think the key word to use here is fine-tuning. Because, for instance, Sir Roger Penrose, a great philosopher, a physicist, and mathematician, he said that for the universe to come to existence by random chance. He said that the probability, the ratio, for this to happen with all its complexity and design is basically 1 out of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123. And that's a great physicist, Sir Roger Penrose. You can look him up. <clears throat> and the interesting thing about this uh, mathematical ratio, I mean, it's so, I know it's, not, it's so insignificant, you can't even consider a number. It's literally impossible, brothers and sisters. So think about who's good with, you know, numbers here. Yeah? Well, isn't that uh, more atoms that exist inside the plane of the universe that we, uh, that we know? Say that again? So the number that you're uh, ex explaining, because I've um, heard this, uh, this argument beforehand, is that there's more, there's less of a chance of the universe coming to existence by itself, like, if, um, you know, that... that uh, yeah, by itself. Yeah. Proportionate number. Yes. Um, that yeah. it's actually more... Or, more probable, uh, you mean? Or less probable? There are less atoms yeah. uh, in the universe, known universe, than that number there. Absolutely, that's true too, because that number adds up to 10 to the power of 64. Mm -hmm. So if you count the number of atoms total, uh, it's 10 to the power of 64. This is 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123. And it's only 1 out of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123 that the universe would come to exist the way it does, with all its complexity and design, with all the fine-tuning. 
And if we think about numbers, I mean, think about this. You know, how many zeros are in a million? Six. Six, right? Okay, how about a billion? Okay, good. What about a decillion? Thirty-three. Okay, so ten to the power of thirty-three is a decillion. Now think about ten. We're not even talking about ten to the power of thirty-three. We're talking about ten to the power of ten to the power of a hundred and twenty-three. Think about that number. It's huge, huge number, right? So now the ratio of everything to exist the way it does, the universe to exist the way it does. If it came from chance, it would only be one out of ten to the power of ten to the power of one hundred and twenty-three. But that was only at the time of what limited knowledge of the universe that there is. So that's only based on the known. So the, the whole universe. idea, what's being presented here, is it's logically, it's realistically impossible for the universe to just exist out of mere nothingness, right? There had to have been a first cause. So that's the first cause argument. It also ties to the teleological, cosmological argument. Yeah. So this is an argument that's convincing to me. That for an atheist, wouldn't they have already thought about this? But it seems like the first thing they would think about is. Is the what? It seems like for an atheist, we must have thought about this. And like, I cannot think of that we just missed this. We must have thought about this. And um, believe it or not, no. A lot, a lot of atheists simply are atheists because, you know, um, they, it's just based on their upbringing, right? So they've came into atheism. Now, if you're talking about a more positive, they call it positive, positive atheism, it's, it's very likely, yes. And this is where you start getting arg argumentation. But the next approach that we're going to use is a Quranic argument. And the reason why this approach is very powerful is because it deductively goes through the premise and leaves you with a conclusion. So if, if they want to present a premise, an additional premise, sure, we can talk about it. But this is the premise. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. So this isn't my argument. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. He said, um, This is in Surah At-Tur, chapter 52, uh, verse 35, 36. Um, Am khuliku min ghayri shay'in, am humul khaliqun, am khalaqu as-samawati wal ard, bal la yuqinun. So Allah says, <coughs> were they created from nothing? Did they create themselves? Right? Were they created from nothing? Did they create themselves? Did they create the heavens and the earth? And then Allah says, rather they are not certain. So let's look at this deductively, meaning step by step. So, we apply this, this is applying uh, to the human being, but it can also be applied to the universe, as the ulama have stated, Ibn Taymiyyah and others. So you take this, So either the universe was created from nothing, or the universe created itself, or the universe was created by another universe, or created by something that was created, that is, or the universe was created by an entity or something that was uncreated. These are only four possibilities, in terms of the existence of the universe. And we use the universe as means to prove the existence of Allah, the existence of God. And so with the atheist, in my discussion with atheists, I think this is a very sound approach. Because it does also deal with the first cause issue. And it does talk about te te like the um, cosmological, te teleological approach as well. So, you go through it. Am khulikum in ghayri shay'in. Go through it step by step. Am khulikum in ghayri shay'in. Were they created by nothing or from nothing? So you ask them, can something be created from nothing? What do you guys think? Can something be created from nothing? Um, no. No. no, right? Because you have to have something to give you something. If you don't have something, you can't get right? anything. So thus, you have to have something to give you something. I mean, when's the last time you saw just like things pop up into, in the midst of, uh, of open air, right? It doesn't happen. I mean, even the magician, right? When a magician takes a rabbit out of a hat, he's taking something out of something. But what they believe in, the atheists who believe that, and some atheists do believe, you know, that it came from nothingness, that it was just a, an arrangement of atoms by random chance that just came and kind of first caused the universe. Some, some people do believe that. But that belief has no basis. It has no basis, given the fact that, I mean, that belief is worse than magic. From a physicist's point of view, it's also inconsistent and inaccurate. So nothing, you always have to have something to give you something. You can't get um, something from nothing. It's just a logical impossibility. Or were, they, or were they the creators of themselves? So did they create themselves? Right? Did they create themselves? And you can ask them a very simple question. So can your mother give birth to herself? Can you create yourself? Of course not. It's a logical contradiction. It's an impossibility as well because in order for you to create yourself... 
or in order for your mother to give birth to herself, it means she has to pre-exist and post-exist simultaneously, which is impossible. So you can't pre-exist and, and post-exist or exist. So we reject that. So we, we get rid of uh, these two possibilities. So again, it's either four possibilities, and you can invite them to bring a fifth one, but there is no fifth one, even according to modern-day physicists, atheists, they'll agree that, okay, fine, it has to be one of these four. They'll argue that it may be nothing, or it may be some other thing, but we can, this is why we're dealing with it. So, they were created from nothing? No. Uh, the universe was created, for, for, created from nothing? No. Where they, did the universe create itself? If the universe created itself, again, logical impossibility, because that's to pre-exist and post-exist. Or did they create the heavens and the earth? So now this is saying a human creating the heavens and earth, so you can apply this to the universe. Did one universe create another universe? So imagine you have universe A and universe B. So to say that universe A created universe B, do you think that's problematic? Yeah. That's very problematic. Why? Who created universe A? Okay, good. Exactly, right? But then they'll say universe B. So what do you say from there? Who created universe B? Exactly. Well, universe C. D, E, F, right? Then you wouldn't exist. Right. Well, you fall into the absurdity of the infinite regress. You fall into infinity. Impossible. So that's called um, the absurdity of the infinite regress or infinite regression, which is something that is not accepted. So we reject that. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interestingly leaves it open. Why? Because the answer is obvious. It's, all, it's only four possibilities. Brothers and sisters, that's it. Either we were created from nothing, we created ourselves, we created, we are something that is created, we created the heavens and earth ourselves, or just not certain. Allah leaves it blank. He says they are uncertain because obviously the answer is by default, what? That Allah, who doesn't have a first cause, who is uncreated, is the one who created everything that exists. So in order for everything to exist today, there has to be a first cause that is uncaused. Is, is, is that clear? The first cause has to be uncaused. Meaning the first cause has to not have a beginning. And this is why we believe Allah is an awwal, right? And we believe Allah is the eternal. He has no beginning. He has no end. Right? He's not bound by time. He's not bound by space. Once you believe that Allah is bound by space and time then what you have done is you've humanized God. And once you make God into human, you're not making God transcendent. And the understanding is you need to completely put a line between the creator and the creation. Because once, once you make the creator like the creation, it's no longer the creator. This is the point. The creator has unique attributes and the creation has unique attributes. For example, Allah is the first and the last. Allah, Allah has no beginning, no end. We humans, we have a beginning, we have an end. Allah is the most merciful. We are not the most merciful. We can have mercy, right? But we're not the most merciful, obviously, as we can see in the world. We are not the most just. Yes, we can try to have justice, but we're not the most just. We are not maximally perfect. We can try to reach perfection, but we never will, right? We are not all loving. We are loving, but we are not all loving. There can only be one all loving. Okay, so all these things. And now someone may ask a question as you mentioned earlier, which was, can you repeat the question? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, uh, who then created God if everything uh -huh. has been created by something, so we who created it. So who created God? Alright, so we followed up with the premise all the way to the end. And now, you know, they said, okay, fine, I agree. Obviously, you know, the universe didn't come from nothing. It didn't create itself. You know, it wasn't created by something else that's created. So yeah, maybe it, has to, maybe it was created by an uncreated entity. But then they'll ask, well, who created that uncreated entity? How can it be uncreated? Like, I don't get it, right? So who created that uncreated entity? It can't be uncreated, like, I don't get it. So they'll, like, they're mind boggled. What is the answer, brothers and sisters? Does anyone know? If someone came and asked you, and this is a real question that we get every once in a while, but in speaking to atheists, uh, the brother mentioned a good point earlier. He said, like, you know, didn't atheists already think about this? It's true, they did. Uh, but this is why we go through this deductive, you know, process. And ultimately, it leads to that question. Well, who created God? So, how would you guys answer that? Well, that goes back to so okay, so you're saying if they believe that... Like, if they believe something created God and created that and created that, it'll go on forever, which means uh, there wouldn't be any creation because it'll just keep on going, right? 
So it only makes sense that God would have to be something that's uncreated because that's the only option left. Okay. Yes, in the back. It's a false question. Like, if, if we reach the point that there is uh, an uncreated entity that created the universe, we cannot ask who created the uncreated. It is a false question. Really. It's a false question, yeah. It's, it's a non-question, right? Good, Marshall. You say that basically God is uh, independent, so he's outside of the universe, outside of time and space. Excellent. Therefore, he's not finite like us. Yes. He's independent of. He's not universe. bound by space and time. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Brother, thank you. Uh, my answer would be like, um, okay, you're saying that um, God has to. Did anybody else uh, claim that He created the universe? Hmm. Interesting approach. Say, yes. So, did anyone make the claim, right? Yeah. Okay. So they can, they might say yes. Some people, uh, some things happened that some people came and said, "We are gods, and uh, like Jesus, we can do things like nobody right. else did." But okay, I'm gonna go back to the same question. Uh, did they create the creation? And I'm gonna go to the the biggest argument in the Quran. Okay, um, God he claimed that he can uh, rises the sun from the east. Can anybody else make it uh, rises from the west? Mm. 